Welcome to Sim UK. Today, this is Transport Fever's updated review. So, after all the patches and the updates, is this game smoking hot, or does it just make you feel sick? For such a small company, Urban Games should be commended for what they have achieved with Transport Fever. As an attempt at recreating the classic Transport Tycoon, this game scores very well. It has successfully captured the original ethos and has also expanded upon the original. It also expands on all the best bits from its predecessor, Train Fever. And it runs cross-platform, even on Linux. An increasingly important factor, or so it seems. The procedurally generated maps are large, and the terrain is often undulating and intricate, which in turn makes your in-game management decisions even more important. On the whole, the graphics are good, especially on the more modern vehicles, and with the ability to zoom right in on individual characters, who each have their own bio, desires and limitations, this game has content in abundance. The complexity of economic environment ensures a pleasant and rewarding challenge is on offer throughout. Each city has zones, more specifically residential, industrial, commercial and leisure, and each resident has their own personal movements and requirements therein. When you see cities growing and evolving off the back of your successes and or failures, plus the economic influence that that incurs, I have to say, this game simulates a real world environment very well. The technology tree, which starts all the way back in 1850, is a little bit limited, but fleshy enough to remain engaging and keep you motivated throughout. With a plethora of trains, aeroplanes, ships, buses, trams and trucks amassing to more than 120 vehicles available in total, and with the modding community now in full swing, that number is growing daily. The same applies for modded audio, and soon too I expect to see campaigns and missions included. One of the most fulfilling aspects of Transport Tycoon is the railway creation. Equally, you can build roads, ports, bus and truck stops, airports, tunnels and bridges, but it is the railway system for me that is the part I enjoy most of all. The building mechanism controls are clunky and at times infuriating, but they can normally be wrestled into submission. Transport Fever includes a campaign mode, something which was lacking from its predecessor, and it is fair to say that the missions and challenges included are pretty good, with a few pointless optional missions annoyingly thrown in. You can choose from two campaigns, America and Europe, and the campaign mode also serves as a tutorial, which is very important because this game is not that intuitive and is rightly labelled as having an unnecessarily steep learning curve. And it comes with a very pleasing soundtrack. Transport Fever is not without its issues though. The most notable of these has to be performance, which, despite numerous patches, continues to struggle even on the higher end of PCs. Additionally, and in many ways because of the performance issues, this game struggles with stability. A temporary band-aid styled solution has been implemented which requires you to save the game regularly, which would be fine but for the fact that it causes the game to fully stutter every five minutes or so. The ability to have multiple windows open on screen at once, which is a feature that dates back to the original Transport Tycoon game, is in some instances very useful, but does have an obvious impact on performance once again. The control system is horrible to use, and many believe the default camera controls to be the complete reverse of the norm. Thankfully, they can be changed from within the game's option menu. There is also an abhorrent lack of opposition, unlike the original game Transport Tycoon, which simulated numerous opponents. As a result, it lacks some of that toe-to-toe, -to -toe, tit for tat business battle. Benefiting from your opponent's successes and or failures is how businesses evolve. Equally disappointing is the fact that there is no mention of multiplayer ever making its way into Transport Fever, which is a monumental shame, as what fun is business without competition of any sort? I for one would forgo map size, multiple windows and a whole host of other features currently in place in order to have an AI or human opponent to pitch my wits against. 
Negatives aside, there are some great features included in this game. If you're a tycoon nerd, then you're probably going to like this game a lot. And it will entertain you for some time to come, especially when you begin to venture into the mods now available. So, if you can overlook the ham-fisted controls, the performance issues, the AI conflicts and lack of opposition, then Transport Fever is a game which offers great economic detail, pleasing graphics and content, and the potential for unlimited replayability thanks to procedurally generated maps and the ever-expanding modding options. My name's SimUK, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, take good care of yourselves now. Goodbye.